Um, uh, I was just saying that I have um, lived with this book for two years. So it came out in, I think, maybe July 2020. Yes. And, but it's sort of, yeah, an online, online launch. Yeah. So it's nice to do something in person. But I've really lived with this project for much longer. And I just want to tell you a little bit about it because um, it's really a, a kind of wide ranging or kind of multifarious project uh, that involves performances, installations, various collaborations with musicians, sculptors, um, costume makers, um, and of course other performers. So I have also performed many of these pieces or lecture performances emerging from these pieces on my own, but many of these pieces were performed with other people and they were performed inside large sets, sometimes small sets, um, or with costumes. And um, for a really long time, I've been very interested in thinking about how we can make, or how I can make, language um, wearable. So uh, for one performance, for example, which is the third in this book, Emilia Galotti's coloring book, Feelings, um, I wore a costume uh, that had um, some text printed on it that was then also used in the performance and there was uh, some choreography that kind of, you know, for me to interact with the text or the other performance to read off my body or I could read off other people's bodies. Um, text was also visualized um, through objects, performative objects and props. So sometimes there might be text on a kind of abstract object that, that could then be used differently through performance and was kind of maybe activated through, through the performance or through language. And um, uh, the project started um, with an invitation in 2014 by two dear friends when we were all living in New York and they were organizing um, a small exhibition and it, they sent everyone uh, a few drawings of theatre maquettes. Theatre maquettes are basically sketches for possible um, stages. And these drawings look to me um, incredibly camp and also 18th century and ornamental and baroque and ridiculous and fun. And I then wrote a piece, I was sort of reminded of Schiller's Don Carlos and started writing this very short play for these maquettes, which was then, the piece was then recorded in part of the exhibition and I sort of then forgot about it again and returned to the project thinking like, maybe I could just make these little plays um, and just entertain myself that way. And the title, My Little Enlightenment Plays, uh, refers both to the genre of writing, to plays, performance pieces, <coughs> But it's also a verb. My little enlightenment is playing. It's playing in my head. What could be my little enlightenment? Um, and I think that's sort of just uh, what I wanted to share with you because I, um, I will only read um, a monologue, uh, one of the pieces to you, because I can't really do justice to the uh, richness or complexity of the, the performative elements of these pieces. Um, but um, I hope that you, I mean, if you're interested, go away and, and read them, these pieces, but also maybe uh, if you're interested, talk to me a little bit about, uh, I can share with you some, some photographs or videos of the performances, and maybe another time I could do a kind of full-blown performance of one of the pieces. Um, uh, I should also say that uh, all of these texts are experimental translations of what I call um, imaginary tete-a-tete -tete with enlightenment thinkers, writers, and scientists, or sometimes pseudoscientists, or what we would maybe call pseudoscientists. Um, and this one, this this monologue is from a piece called <coughs> Les Bijoux en Scray, or Paper Tigers. And um, this was written with, uh, with, or alongside, or through um, Diderot, um, also Margaret Cavendish and um, Bernard Fontenelle. And this is a kind of figure who enters the stage at the end as a sort of deus ex machina. And I'll just leave you with that, with that monologue. Whenever I'm stuck, I just turn my eyes towards these galactic luminaries 
my delicate communion with ye, ye, ye. Oh, you unhappy eyes. Whether deception occurs when observing the eternal stars is not really the right question, not a favorable flexion of your extra ocular muscles. I know that any star not over the zenith is truly a penny seen below water, and therefore the authorities and extracurricular agents say that heaven is fourfold, refracted, redacted, accidental, and utterly unsentimental. Another conclusion would be that every line falls obliquely, but together the lines do not appear as a perfect circle, like a pea or a pearl. There is harmony in similarity, which is just another way of saying natural philosophies are a real love affair that doesn't add up. For me, a tugging, wrenching sight is a gift from the firmament in this world in which I don't want anything else except light that is not hung or like a curtain concealed against that nimble seeing which is theatrical, dramatically structured for blurry eyes. This is my method of exhaustion. I'm not exactly blind, but being someone who walks the precipice, I'm incorrigible. When they talk to me, they might not know. After all, reality is there to be corrected. It has to allow it. I direct these shadows. I adore that splodge or blot over there as perhaps something knowable. Now, you might think, what sweet palaver. I'm just another who discovers poetry in the flapping of forte pianos, contometers, dictational earpieces, phonographs and cryptographs, slopping a little bit of that cerebral sustenance onto tables in a malevolent bowl of some reverberating celestial vaults. Oh, pace myself. Order my life. Sometimes when I cannot read these incendiary scriptures for all their illuminated bombast, I simply make up a likely hypothesis, which usually does just as well. For example, I do not know why someone's bonnet or briquette catches fire, but I do know about the label of reason. So I turn to my old friend and say, dear Karl Marx, ma petite minette, you ought to know better. You're an inquiring intelligence. Why these bibliographic fantasies? Sit down for a moment. You are likely to be impatient, even critical and sarcastic with those who cannot match your frantic rhythm. But you are adaptable. You always think of the future, of action, of objects, because you constantly need to be on the move. Beware, however, not to confuse obstinacy with intransigence. You are happy as long as your mind is in turmoil. And even then, you need to have plenty of people around, people who listen to you, unless you are the one to glean for yourself here and there the intellectual food you are so fond of. And then my friend might say, I have to confess I'm slightly unnerved by this slab of flesh on fire. So I'm just inventing this confessional sinner, driving home the nail into the wall of a curious but detached audience. Come to think of it. This could be a nice little show. Well, dear one, since you are so well trained in stunning movements, I would suggest removing the parapet and coming right out with it. It's okay you're upset. I'm not upset. Like the majority of earth signs, Karl Marx, you are efficient, concrete, and not too emotional. <laughs> what matters to you is what you see. You judge the tree by its fruits, but appearance and reality are two different things, aren't they? You're a kind of genius, so it's no big deal. Nobody tires of your company because you're always planning things and suggesting portentous excursions. Obviously, so many movements for one man may scare people off, and some may even criticize your brutality or your tendency to lose your temper. But you are so warm and genuine, so expansive. Isn't that a good thing? Little <coughs> indication was given of how we were to spend our hours. Weep with us, O oh, Marx, be it said not sadly of us. We have done that which we had to do. O oh, my heart's non foray, I would say that space is truly, invisibly, and indivisibly drastic and therefore touchable. Here's my map of the world, my astronomer's guide in big print. 
Now let's hear the whole truth before anyone gets into an argument. Look here, I'm just reading from a random page. Well, this is nice. Thank you.